I'd like to talk about today is uh, a little bit of pain, a little bit of suffering, a little bit of challenge, and a little bit of optimism. So with that said, I would love to kind of give, for those of you that haven't met me, I am uh, definitely somebody that uh, finds great value in floating. Um, my whole journey started with a float at Space Time Tanks in 2015. And that was in April of 2015. Since then, I've opened four centers and it has been one hell of a ride, as we know. So this slide here, uh, hopefully you can all see it, kind of describes the journey. And uh, you know, I've told the story a million times. If you listen to the art of the float, I've talked about my zero to nine month journey, enough to have a baby, but also enough to have a float center. So my first float, April 2015, my first float center, Float 60 River North, opened in February of 2016, uh, just nine months. The next center opened in March of 2018, and that was my uh, Northwest Indiana location, which is very close to where I live. The third location uh, is my most challenging location, and that is uh, the South Loop location, uh, December of 2018. You would think that by the time you open your third one, it gets easier. That was definitely not the case for me. And for those of you that have listened to me on the, on the podcast, you've heard a lot of stories and you're gonna hear a few of those today. Um, with great impeccable timing, I acquired a fourth center, Epic Float, and that was in March of 2020. And we all know what happened in March of 2020. So with that, we'll kind of uh, go into a little bit about what the centers are made up as. So the first center, five tanks, we, we had meditation at one point, or I'm sorry, VR at one point. We, had, we have retail, we still do. Uh, the Indiana location, the second location, I introduced Cryo, um, which has been a great, amazing uh, service to have. The third location, again, was the South Loop. We have four float tanks, including an Orion and a Filion and wave rooms. We have an infrared sauna, and uh, we were supposed to have cryo, but that didn't happen due to some things you'll see here at the uh, end of this presentation. And then uh, again, the fourth location was Float 60 Lake Zurich, which was acquired. Um, I acquired Epic Float up in Lake Zurich from uh, Jennifer Whiten. And so uh, obviously that was, again, kind of weird timing. So how do I do this, right? For those of you that uh, may no, I work full time in technology and I always have. There was only a, a short period of time where I didn't, which I regret uh, kind of leaving it because it, it was a difficult time. But these are some of the people and there's 27 people on my team uh, that was the highest employee count we had. But these people here on this screen uh, really have been with me for the longest duration and they are really the, the reason why we are able to do what we do. Um, and I'm able to do what I do. And that's uh, Lisa. Some of you met her at the float conference a couple of years ago. She uh, facilitated a contest with uh, various float task uh, activities. Rochelle was at the float conference as well. Um, she handles my community awareness, partnerships, and you know, it's just very pivotal in kind of bringing awareness to Float 60 in the city of Chicago. And then Gibson, you might recognize Gibson and Lisa kind of look alike, mother and son. Uh, Gibson was with me for a while, left and worked at a different float center in Grand Rapids, and then he came back to Float 60 and now is currently running my fourth location. So just to give you a landscape of where we are, um, if you look up here in the right corner, you see the whole United States, Chicago, uh, and all of those little icons represent what you see blown out here. So when I opened Float 60 River North, none of these other float centers existed. There, there was a couple that did, um, but most of them did not exist. So obviously, as most of the country has exploded, we represent that in Chicago, several float centers. And then uh, this represents the proximity of the two locations I have, Float 60 River North, Float 60 South Loop are very close to each other, right in downtown Chicago. Float 60 Lake Zurich is way up in the northern suburbs of Chicago. 
And then Float 60 uh, Northwest Indiana is just south of Chicago across the state line. And uh, that's in Shareville, Indiana. So that's a little bit of the lay of the land. So everything's going great. Things are moving in a great direction. And then this shit show happens. Um, wouldn't be the float conference if somebody didn't drop some kind of uh, profanity and gosh, does this warrant it? So these images here show you uh, some of the challenges that I had with my South Loop location. And, you know, again, that was my third location. The first two, pretty, pretty easy, pretty easy to open. This one, uh, let me just kind of walk you through what some of these photos are. So this is my Orion tank sitting on State Street in Chicago, and it damn near got hit by a bus. Uh, that's kind of a story in and of itself. So that's what that picture is. This is sewage coming through uh, the floor at my uh, construction site, uh, and it kind of carried over to post opening as well. This picture represents uh, a mistake with our flooring that I had to rip out and kind of start over with. So these are kind of like the construction challenges. And this is my little guy. This is my 10 year old son uh, on top of a mountain. It looks like a pile of something. It's actually the, the earth we ungrounded there. But this, this kind of represents the challenges we had in the construction process. Uh, and they're not, they're not unusual, right? But there was, just a significant amount of uh, things to overcome and it, they continued after we opened. And with that, I'm gonna kind of uh, show you a video. There's, there's no sound, but I'm gonna show you this video. Just kind of be quiet for a second, let you take this all in. Yep, ceiling tile falling from the ceiling with one with my security camera, a little insulation, nothing like a little rainfall during a polar vortex at your brand new location, the uh, track light falling down. <laughs> so that was two months after we were open. And uh, for those of you that lived through the polar vortex in the Midwest, it was caused by a burst coil and just various other problems. So that was kind of the start of the operational problems once uh, we open that location. This picture represents something that's very recent. And for those of you that uh, follow the news, uh, Chicago, not unlike other cities, have been impacted by the civil unrest. And in this case, this is a you know picture of somebody coming through my space with a baseball bat. And so this, this location really has had its trials and tribulations, uh, and we're not really sure what's going to happen. So, not to be a Debbie Downer on all that, but I promised I would talk about the not so fun side of our business. What did we learn in all that? Well, you know, scaling is hard. It is not easy. The notion that uh, opening one gives you all the information you need to be successful in the other is just absolutely false. Every location has its own dynamics. Every location has its own challenges with whether it's the real estate, whether it's the construction, whether it's the, you know, things that are going around in the city. Um, so again, no two locations are ever the same. They're not even close. And two locations are, yes, twice as hard as one, but four is 10 times harder than one. Um, so it, it definitely is a different dynamic that I've learned, um, thought that it would be, you know, a little bit easier to scale. I definitely learned that uh, having strong financials, and when I say strong, I don't mean, you know, you're bringing a lot of money to the bottom line. I that's definitely, you know, part of what's helpful. But I'm speaking more about the the need for ongoing organization of financials to kind of wear with through all of these different uh, challenges that you have. You know, fortunately, we were ready for you know, applying for all of the, the assistance we could apply for because our financials were strong and organized and clear. And uh, we, we really got on, you know, the train very quickly. Um, and then, you know, be ready to pivot. I'm sitting here wondering what is going to happen with the fate of at least one of our locations, possibly two. And so I'm constantly thinking in my mind, how are we going to pivot from this? How do we modify? How do we 
you know, make adjustments. And so that's definitely a lesson learned uh, that's not new, but something that I'm, you know, actively thinking about day in and day out uh, every single day. So what's next? Like I said, the fate of the South Loop is unknown at this point, but to reiterate what Stephen said, I believe in my heart, people need us more than ever before. And that gives me optimism for the entire industry. I think it's gonna be a challenge to get people educated again, to believe that that's the case, but I know in my heart that it is. Um, I'm definitely gonna be piloting new ways of doing business. This was not planned, um, but Maximum Floats is one of our sponsors and I recently started a pilot with them. Um, I'll probably continue doing it with our other locations. So I'm trying to find ways to pivot and do things differently. I think the, the industry needs it. And uh, that's just one of the examples of what we're doing. Um, and the, the last one is just investing in key people. Um, I've been doing that since the beginning. I could not do what I do without the team that I have and the support of the industry. Uh, the Art of the Flow podcast is so uh, important to me, uh, not just for the information, but for the, the support I get from my co-hosts and shout out to all of them. It is uh, very important to invest in your own education. So I would you know, definitely continue to to do that. Um, and I will continue to do that and just continue to learn from everybody that I can. Um, so those are kind of the lessons learned. There's much more to the story, but this is a preview event. And uh, the, the goal of doing this event is to give you a feel for how the format will work. And hopefully, you know, just in this small amount of time, you get some insight that if you're going through pain, you're not alone. Uh, it happens to the best of us, right? So, uh, I'd like to just, before we go to questions and answers, I'd like to thank everybody from the float conference uh, as well. Everybody has put in such a, a crazy amount of work to pivot and get to this new way of interacting. And it's, it's terrific. So I'm excited about the think takes that are coming up and hopefully you guys will participate and we will see you in September. Mm -hmm.